The job hunt sucks. Even though unemployment is low, I live in literal Silicon Valley. You've heard about all the tech layoffs over the last year, and I was impacted by that when I was laid off from Avermedia in June 2022. Those layoffs have made the job market super competitive. If I'm applying to any given job, a hiring manager is 99 times out of 100 going to gravitate more towards someone with like Meta or Google on their resume compared to little old me with Avermedia. I've had plenty of job interviews over the last year, but invariably I've been told, sorry, we picked someone else with more experience. So F it, I'm making my own experience. This whole strategy was really inspired by reading on stoicism, specifically some of the books by Ryan Holiday. Stoicism is not a perfect philosophy and you should watch Philosophy Tube's video on stoicism for a very nuanced take on it. But I really resonated with the book, The Obstacle is the Way. The main concept in that book is that what's in your way is the way. If your path is obstructed, that informs what your new path must be. If the job market is prohibitively competitive in my area, what can I do? The job market is the obstacle. So my way constitutes creative projects on YouTube, freelance work for clients, and further education in grad school. But first, how do these fit in with my career objectives? My work experience is primarily in social media management, influencer relations, content creation, copywriting, and marketing in general. As well as a lot of audio and video stuff that I've picked up. What do I want to do with that? First, I do enjoy each of these things and I would not be opposed to dialing up on any of them. However, if you go a step above all of these roles, they all kind of fit under the same umbrella of like creative marketing, content marketing, and branding. In the long term, my goal is to be more of a strategic creative marketing or branding person. The person who more or less plots the course for how a company handles like social media, influencer relations, content, things like that. The overall vibe of the marketing, let's say. So how do my creative projects like the YouTube channel you're watching right now fit into that? In many of the interviews I've had, I've been told my YouTube channel is exactly what sets me apart as a marketer. It shows I'm creative, it shows I can build an audience, it shows I can use audio, video, editing tools, and it shows I'm a self-starter who can hold myself accountable in work. So as it applies not just to me, but anyone who has a YouTube channel and takes it relatively seriously, you are working on a lot of skills. Creativity, writing, Editing, videography, like technical camera skills, video editing, social media management, content marketing. You literally need to make your content marketable. Public speaking, graphic design, and I could go on. A YouTube channel is a great way to show your work, just like the book of the same name by Austin Kleon suggests that you do. The gist is if you share your skills and passions with the world in some way, whether that's a blog or a YouTube channel, chances are more opportunities will come to you. And opportunities aside, I make a few hundred bucks a month for my YouTube channel. At the time of making this video, I have around 5,000 subscribers, and my sources of YouTube-related income are ad revenue, Songbird Ocarina affiliate revenue, Amazon affiliate revenue, and Patreon. A few hundred bucks a month absolutely does not replace a job, but it's way way better than nothing. If you want to apply this to yourself, if you can make content that is relative to your job, or if the act of making content is relevant work experience, make YouTube videos, start a channel. You never know what happens. Given that for most people, the chances of YouTube ever replacing a full-time job are slim or take a very long time to actually make money, I'm doing a lot of freelance work. If this is something you want to try, make sure the work that you're doing on a freelance basis is at least relatively in line with your career objective. I think the work that I'm doing is directly in line with my career objective. First, for clients, I do freelance social media and content creation. This is directly in line with my career goals. I have a few clients that I do work for, ranging from just editing their videos to fully managing their social media presence. And I charge a lot more hourly than the equivalent hourly rate of most salaried positions that I qualify for. But freelance work is comparably inconsistent and I work nowhere near 40 hours a week of freelance work. I only have work when clients have projects for me and freelance work also does not have any built-in benefits like health insurance or paid time off. However, this client work with a focus on social media and content creation is the exact type of work that I want to do, the exact type of experience that I want to build. And on top of that, when it comes to freelance work, things like this tend to snowball. The more clients I get and the more good work I do for clients, the easier it is to get more clients. That is contingent on actually doing good work and getting good reviews and having people recommend you to potential future clients, but 
it does snowball. And on top of that, the skills that I'm gaining and improving on this are really useful. From understanding multiple industries and business models, to doing a wide variety of social media and content work, through being able to pitch myself when I'm reaching out to prospective clients, and frankly, learning how to make money rather than just doing a job. And if I want to be a strategic marketer, it helps to both create and execute the strategies for many different businesses to gain a lot of deep experience. But given the relative inconsistency of freelance work, given that I only make money if I have projects from clients, I do have work that I can do basically whenever I want. And that work is tech journalism for makeuseof.com. I started writing for them in summer of last year, took a leave of absence, and then came back a few months ago. I write about creative tech, content creation strategy, and more. This gives me a portfolio of work to show that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to content creation and tech for content creation. And I get paid to make that portfolio. Like I could make videos, I could write on my own blog saying that I know my stuff, but it's a bit more trustworthy if my ideas are hosted on a well-respected tech site. It also keeps my writing sharp since I'm constantly getting helpful feedback in an editorial setting. This has also helped with getting very comfortable with deadlines, and I'm also really good at taking criticism and feedback now. I'm also quite efficient when I write articles. Because the pay structure is pay per submission, there's no hourly rate or anything, I end up having a pretty decent hourly rate when you consider the time I spend working versus the amount I get paid per article. It's not amazing, but it's better than just about any part-time job I could have right now, but not as much as my freelance rate. I can also use the topics that I get paid to write about for make use of as the basis for videos on my YouTube channel. Obviously not like reading out the article or copy and pasting or whatever, but if I've already structured my thoughts about a topic, it's very easy to just write a quick video script talking about it. In any case, writing for Make Use Of gives me a strong public portfolio and improves my skills as a writer. And writing is arguably the most useful meta skill for almost every profession, especially marketers. If you have niche skills or knowledge, try finding ways to apply them in a freelance setting. Whether going broad and posting yourself on Fiverr, reaching out to local businesses like I am in my freelance work, or finding an organization with more structured work like I have with Make Use Of, this is a great way to build your work experience. And my freelance work is a perfect, relatively flexible thing that I can do alongside my further education. I have a bachelor's degree in marketing, but I'm going back to school for my MBA this August. If I had known I was gonna get laid off last summer, I could already have been done with my MBA by now, since the date that I was laid off was about two months before the beginning of the fall term for 2022. Alas, I start the fall 2023 term in August. I do generally think that skills and experience are more valuable than education when it comes to your career, but here is my rationale for pursuing an MBA. First, MBAs are literally designed to help you become a more strategic business thinker. This is directly in line with my career goals of becoming a more strategic creative marketer, even if I end up staying freelance. Two, the local corporate job market sucks, and it seems like it'll continue to do so for a while. Three, if I do get a full-time job, I can still do my MBA. Four, if I don't immediately get a job but get one later, I can slow down the pace of my MBA, at least after the first semester. Five, if I don't get a job and maintain my freelance work, I can do my MBA faster. The MBA program that I'm in virtually costs the same whether I do it in one, two, or three years. It's the same number of classes, just different speeds, depending on whether you're doing it alongside a full-time job. And six, my flexible freelance work and content creation schedule-wise fits in really, really well with doing an MBA. I do recognize that I am very privileged to even be able to turn to higher education as a path when the job market sucks. That said, further education does not have to mean a master's degree or something expensive from an institution. Education can also mean getting certifications, teaching yourself skills, reading more books. That is all much less prohibitively expensive than grad school. In any case, I am making my own experience. I've been facing obstacles in my career and I've constantly been told that I either don't have enough experience experience or don't have the right experience. Thus, the obstacle is the way. Between making videos on my YouTube channel, doing freelance work, and pursuing a graduate degree, I am making that experience myself. Granted, living with parents and not having to pay rent does make this approach a lot easier, and I'm truly coming from a very privileged position to even be able to do all of this. Privilege aside, if you're faced with similar obstacles of being told you're not good enough, how can you get around that or prove them wrong? How can you make your own experience and build the career that you want? It's not easy, it takes a lot of discipline to literally be your own boss, manage your own time, and hold yourself accountable. But it does seem to be working for me so far. How can you find your way in the face of obstacles anywhere in life?
Thank you to my patrons, especially my $5 tier patron Joshua. You can support me for as little as $1 a month on patreon.com slash Andy Cormier. Also, consider watching my video on building your passion rather than following it when it comes to both your career and your hobbies. The mindset that I discuss in that video has largely informed the approach that I'm taking to building my own experience. Otherwise, leave a like, subscribe for more, comment how you might be able to overcome an obstacle in your life, and I'll see you next time. Happy creating.